Hello and welcome. It's been a slow summer for uh, doing radio repairs, a lot on the plate. But we've got this old set here that's been kicking around and somebody I know spotted it, family member actually, and uh, fell in love with it. And I said to myself, well I'll quietly get this up and going and give it to them. Now they did say that they loved it the way it was because of the patina. It's scratched and the varnish is coming off but it's not broken up or banged up too badly. I do have to make a new dial face for it. This one's got a nice split in it right here. and It looks like most of the red paint's fallen off the dial indicator. I will probably go against their wishes on the top here and clean the top up a little bit because the varnish is just flaking off and it's just bare wood. But this has been around for a while and I haven't dug into it with all the projects I've got going on but this does not look to be in the best of shape. Somebody put a cord on it at some point in time. I'm guessing this is an antenna lead. This is most likely a ground lead of some kind. Let me turn the volume down on the uh, ring camera here. It's kind of windy today. There we go. Now we won't be hearing wind noises in the background. I cannot find a model number anywhere on this set. There is a serial number, 406-878, it's a serial number, and I don't know if that means 1940 or if they just used random numbers, but there's absolutely no model information. It does say Fouts, F-O-U-T-S, Radio Service, Lewiston, Illinois, and it's got, again, their stamp is on here twice. And it's got a December 1, 1949. Now, I don't know if that's a manufacturing date or if that's a repair date. But sometime between 1940 and 1949. Uh, because it's got all octals and no sub-miniature tubes, or I'm guessing it's earlier than later. Uh, by 1949, most of the sets had gone over to the 7 and 9 pin miniatures and uh, you know these tubes pretty much started to go away during the war so I'm gonna guess early in the early 1940s 41 42 somewhere in that range I did find a similar model to this similar looking model this one's got short wave on it but I cannot find any pictures of this exact set and there's not a lot of schematic information online anywhere it's in none of my manuals are there general radio there's a lot of general radios pictures of general or excuse me general television radios online lots of photographs so they weren't rare sets but for some reason there's not a lot of schematic information out there if anybody knows precisely what model this is, uh, of course by the time you respond and I find it, it'll probably be repaired. But it would be nice to have the schematic for this. It looked like an All-American 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but there's another tube socket hidden in the back in there. So I'm going to have to find out what that's all about. Uh, I don't know. Uh, this, well, we'll get it out of the chassis and we'll take a closer look at what we've got here. I haven't had this out yet. The, uh, the tuning is bound up. The short wave switch works. The off and volume works all right. Let me get some screws taken out of this, slide it out of the cabinet. I think I've only got a single yet. There's only one screw holding it radio in, so we'll get that pulled out and see what right. we've got. Inside. Got the radio slid out of the cabinet. 
Looking inside here, there's masking tape holding the grill cloth in. And staples holding the dial crystal or dial glass or whatever you want to call it in. The grill cloth actually looks dusty but in good shape. I'm wondering if I ought to just take that out, iron it flat, and put it back in, glue it back in. This has to be re-glued. This has been pulled up. And there's a lot of dust, piece of electrical tape. Oh boy, that tuning cap is stiff. No wonder it's not turning. And what's interesting, well, let me get some of the dust out of here and uh, we'll take a closer look. How's that? Let me get this cabinet out of here. I think I'll we'll blow the cabinet out because that has to be glued back in regardless of what happens. I'll put some glue and clamp that, let that set up while I'm working on it, and I'll blow some of the dust and dirt off the chassis. We've got a fair amount of rust over here and there. Looks like there's been some uh, water ingress or this was stored in a very wet area. Let me try this again. I forgot to push the record button. The uh, cabinet's glu gluing up, and while I was looking at things here, the tuning shaft didn't have any kind of a clip on the back of it and partially fallen out of its mount and when I tried to lift the string back up on it it broke which is not a big deal I've got plenty of dial cord string but the snap ring groove was fairly wide and with a single snap ring in it it would slide forward far enough the uh, uh, of course, I don't have a pencil on the table here. Uh, we'll come over here and grab one. The tuning shaft on the end of it has got a, uh, a cutout for the snap ring to fit into here. And this was so wide and the sheet metal is so thin up here on the chassis that when I put a single snap ring on it the chassis would fall down in there and the thing was still at an angle so I found a washer that would take up some of the space and I put two snap rings to fill up the groove and now I'm guaranteed to have the chassis sitting over here on solid metal it's not going to fall down into the snap ring area so that ensures that it stays far enough into the chassis along with the two snap rings because I've got a washer in here now and then that puts the chassis material over here so it's got plenty of bearing surface I don't understand what happened to that now I'm looking at this somebody has worked on this obviously it's got a new cord there's a couple of electrolytics electrical taped in here there's a capacitor with the end missing. All the wax is blown out of it. That's an older repair, I believe, and plenty of waxies to replace. I'm seeing a solid state diode here, and the tube shield that just fell off, which is in sad condition. We can probably straighten that out and close it back up. That's not a big issue. Uh, Solid-state diode here, and I thought I'd spotted another solid-state diode in here. It's some somewhere. Oh, yeah. No, that's not it. Where the heck did... Oh, right here. There's a solid-state diode here, and a solid-state diode here. This is the second IF transformer. It's an open style with two trimmer capacitors. These, um absolutely positive of the oscillator coils one for uh, AM band and one for shortwave band oh here's something interesting take a look at this switch I hope that comes out well on the camera look at the wires move with the switch the whole back of the switch assembly turns with the wires attached to it that's something I haven't seen in a long long time 
uh, you used to see that type of stuff in the old battery sets, the old that water cans with all the multiple tuning dials and uh, the uh, loose couplers or the coupler used to have wires hanging off of it and sometimes the switches did. I haven't seen that type of construction on a modern radio. So that's kind of unusual. Looking at the tube lineup, we obviously have the oscillator converter here with the antenna coil feeding into it. We have an IF transformer, so this will be our IF amplifier. The other IF transformer is over here, which would make this our detector first audio. We have what looks like a 5Y3, but no, it's a 25Z6. So that's a 25Z6 rectifier. And this is probably a 50L6. No, 25L6. Uh, and an empty tube socket, which appears to have been empty since Christ was a child. The pins are all full of dust and dirt, and it doesn't look like there's been anything in there for a while. Now, adding all of the tubes up, we've got 50 volts plus 18, so there's 68 volts. That certainly won't work with 120 volts. I wonder if that was a ballast. I am not seeing any great big power resistor underneath here, so something had to have added up. I'm wondering... Something's not adding up here correctly. There's not enough voltage in the tube string. and So that's either a ballast tube, or this is not even the tubes that go in the set. Maybe there should be four 12-volt tubes and a couple of 50-volt tubes. I'll have to draw out a schematic. I'll have to trace out the filaments, see if these are even the right tubes. Another interesting thing I've noted, a lot of the tube sockets don't have any pins in them. They've only populated the pins that were actually going to be used on the tube, which is interesting. Usually they just throw in, you know, a standard tube socket and go with what's there. Looks like all or most of the wiring is going to have to be replaced. Uh, the insulation's rotting off a lot of it. I think the next thing I need to do is draw up a schematic of what's here and get a feel for what this is because I don't have any documentation for it. And the speaker is ugly. There's a lot of uh, clear RTV silicon and a piece of duct tape. But the cone's not dragging, or the voice coil's not dragging rather, and the cone is relatively intact. I'll see if I can get this piece of duct tape off of here. Yeah, there's a big crack in the cone right there, and this has been there a long time. The adhesive is all dried up on it. So we'll put some uh, liquid electrical tape on this tear, this hole, and I think the speaker will turn out to be okay because, like I say, there's no dragging voice coil. So that's a plus. The speaker will work. And uh, I've got some more cleaning up to do. That's not original wiring. That's all solid wire with plastic insulation. What does that go up to? That goes up to the dial lamp. That's the heavier ones. Yeah, that's the dial lamp wiring. And the thin ones go down. Yeah, to the 25L6. So that I'll put tubes in the right spot. And again, I don't know, there's jumpers on the tube pins here that have been added. 
I sure hope they didn't try plugging this into 120 volts with that tube string in there because that means I've got an open filament somewhere for sure. Let's hope it only took one out. All right, uh, again, I gotta take some time, draw up a schematic. I'll check the tube filaments for continuity. In fact, this set looks like it might have had room for another tube socket right here. There's a blanking plug right there. So I don't know if this had a different tube complement in it. No information on it. I couldn't find any, you know, any model number, and I couldn't find a radio, even for the one that was very similar to this that I found online, that didn't have the short wave band on it. Uh, the schematic, you know, it wasn't readily available for that one either. And not having a model number, I don't even know where to start. I went through all of my uh, Beatman's most common used schematics and there's only a couple of general television radios in there and they were battery sets and I went through my writers perpetuals and there was a couple of general radio sets in there but nothing uh, using this tube line up or anything even close to it so it can't be all that hard it's a simple all-american 5 for the most part we'll figure it out as we go Okay, let me get some uh, some work done and we'll come All right. back. It's a couple of days later. I've been doing exhaustive research trying to find this set anywhere. Now I can find dozens of various uh, different types of general television uh, receivers or uh, radio receivers that have a very similar look to this none of them have the short wave position they only have the two knobs I have found a unit online that had the same basic back panel with the phonograph input but it wasn't this set because again it didn't have the short wave setting on it uh, this is a phonograph input. There's no switch, and no, this is not a phonograph radio switch. This is a shortwave broadcast switch. This is paralleled. This jack is paralleled right in with the audio circuit. Wasn't uncommon on a lot of these sets. You just tune them to a place on the dial where there wasn't any uh, radio station and played your records. Wasn't all that uncommon. My theory about this extra socket or this empty socket being for a ballast tube has been verified, however. Uh, I traced out the schematic for this little puppy and came up, actually I didn't number these, one, two, three. Uh, I came up with some ballast research. I did some quick math or maths if you're across the pond um, and they were available in several different voltages and several different base configurations all the information I found on these said you're going to have a bit of fun tracking these down if you don't have an exact part number because there's not a lot of standardization however there is information out there on ballast tubes uh, as far as the part numbers go. For instance here, uh, B if it has a pilot lamp action indicates the type of the pilot lamp current it draws. The 49 is the voltage drop. The C is the circuit diagram and G if it's a glass tube. And that led me this that same article had these all of these diagrams based on that lettering for the circuit diagram and they use 3 8 and 7 and that socket only had population points for 3 8 and it actually has one extra one that was never used there's never been any solder on it but 3 8 and 7 is the pin configuration on that socket that's been used which matches both of these ballasts which use a single incandescent lamp 
for the uh, dial lamp. So I found a source of those and if this radio checks out like it's going to work as if it's going to actually function I will actually order the ballast lamp and return this back to its original configuration. I found the ballasts available uh, where oh, I thought yeah vacuum tubes incorporated and they have a uh, zenith part number but the L49B so it's a circuit diagram uh, L, uh, B rather 49 volt drop and it uses an L pilot lamp which makes sense for this set and the L pilot lamp uh, there's another cross reference sheet for that oh there it is L would be a Mazda number 46 at 6.3 volts 250 milliamp this is a 300 milliamp string so that makes sense so if the set turns out to be viable, I'll go ahead and order a ballast tube. While I was tinkering around in here, I wanted to make sure that all the tube heater uh, heaters were intact. They were, and I figured, what the heck, I might as well go ahead and test them. The converter is so weak that I am somewhat skeptical that it'll oscillate. It may or may not oscillate. If it doesn't, I can inject the local oscillator signal from my single generator and then we can test the rest of the set. As long as there's, you know, as long as the tube works at all, if it won't oscillate, I'll just inject the local oscillator signal. Uh, a couple of the other tubes were a little bit soft. I had replacements for them. The rectifier, the 25Z6, looked like it was brand new. I mean, it's like a brand new tube. The 25L6 audio output tube is on the very weak end, but that'll operate for years in that condition. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, but the oscillator, if the oscillator gets too weak, that'd kill the set. The IF tube was a little soft. I had our, uh, excuse me, the 6K7 IF was weak. Probably would have worked fine, but I threw a fresh one in there. Uh, and I had a fresh detector tube as well haven't done anything to the set yet. I haven't made any changes other than I fixed the dial cord and there was one capacitor hidden down in there while I had the dial face off. I went ahead and changed out that one capacitor which would have been a real chore to get to with the dial face in there. So, uh, what I think I'm going, oh, 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 what has been done to this set in lieu of the ballast and this was a somewhat common thing to do to these sets when the ballast went away. Whoever worked on this, and I'm sorry if I'm insulting you, whoever you are, but this is sloppy work. I mean, just to that, put them in here with electrical tape. The power cord, they clipped off the rotten old power cord, left an inch of it in place, soldered a wire to it, and put electrical tape around it why they didn't go the extra inch with the new cord I don't know same thing over here on the off and on switch they left like three quarters of an inch of the old wire and tacked the new one onto it if you're gonna solder here why not solder right to the terminal and be done with it it just doesn't make any sense to me the rest of the paper capacitors have never been changed I don't think this may or may not be the original uh, cathode bypass cap it's hard to say I checked a couple of resistors real quick when I you know if the sets viable when I change out the caps I'm gonna change every resistor in here virtually every resistor I tested had doubled in value I didn't check this one or this one but these two and these three are double their marked value so I'll just change all the resistors and be done with it so we'll put fresh caps, fresh resistors. We'll do something a little bit more neat with that. This kludge here is for the pilot light and what they've done. They took the ballast out. They put a solid state diode in in place of the ballast. 
Now the ballast needs to drop uh, 51 volts. If you add the string up, subtract, it comes up to 68.9 minus 120, 51 volts it needs to drop. The problem with using a diode without a resistor, most people put a resistor in series with the diode. The diode's only going to drop the effective RMS voltage to 63 volts, which means we'll be hitting this filament string with an additional uh, 14 volts, 14.3 volts to be exact. Will it work? Yeah, but... Uh, it's typically stated like an incandescent lamp filament. If you go 5% over on the voltage, you cut the lamp life in half. Probably doesn't follow exactly with that percentage, those percentages for uh, heaters in a tube, but let's face it, they're not making tubes anymore. Let's not drive those heaters any harder than we're supposed to. They have a spec of 6.3 and 25 volts. Let's keep it there. So I'm going to stick a 47 ohm resistor, that's what I calculated up, and that'll drop my voltage down. It'll give me my 51 volt drop along with the diode and the resistor. I'll have my 51 volt drop. I only need a 4.2 watt resistor. I've got a 25 watt 47 ohm right here, which will hold me for now. And like I say, if the set turns out to be okay, I'll go ahead and order a ballast tube for it and put everything back to where it was. And to operate the dial lamp, they put a 6 volt Zener diode here at the end of the string where this heater would go to ground. They're grounding it through a Zener diode, 6.3 Zener diode, because right now they're only using half wave rectification. They're using a diode up here. So by using a Zener diode here, you don't have to worry about the negative going peak on your AC. You're only worried about that one direction peak. So the Zener diode will drop 6.3 volts to ground and take care of the... Uh, actually, that would reduce my 14 volts. But that will take care of your, pilot, your dial lamp. You can have a... Uh, I forgot to calculate that voltage drop in when I... But, that's going to be complex because it's also going through here. <clears throat> I'm not going to bother calculating this, this total voltage drop. I'm just going to go ahead and wire this up with a 47 ohm resistor and power it with 120 volts and we'll see if the set works. But at any rate, it's a clever setup. I mean, he, you know, half wave diode here and using a zener here for the dial lamp where originally this would have had the dial lamp as part of the ballast. They would have used, there's two resistors inside the ballast in series and they use the small one here, the small value one for the dial lamp. So that's where we stand at the moment. I hope I'm not talking too fast. I hope that made sense. Uh, I've been anxious to get going on this. In my research for these, I found probably 50 different models of general television receivers, radio receivers. As I say, many of them look very similar to the one I've got. This one uses 12 volt tubes, a 35 and a 50. It all totals, or two, excuse me, two 35s and four 12 volt tubes. That adds up to 120 volts. So there's no ballast and no um, resistors needed. This set uses 14 volt tubes and a 50 and a 35. So again, they just total up a bunch of, uh, of tubes. The only other general television sets that I could find that had ballast tubes in them were battery sets. They made a lot of battery sets. But I could not find any All-American 5 types in any of the schematics, and I, I spent probably four hours going through all the riders and all the Beatmans and, and all the schematics I could find part numbers for for general television radios. Never did find one that matched this. As I say, the closest one I found had a, a chassis that was identical looking to this with the oval cutout and the phono, but it wasn't an uh, AM shortwave set and the schematic wasn't listed. 
in any of my schematics. It probably also had a ballast tube in it. But that's all right. We've figured out what has to go in there. We figured out what we're going to do. I'm going to put the resistor in here. I'll tape up a few things. Uh, these look new enough. I trust them at this point. I'll power this up when I get the resistor in. I'll do that for you guys as soon as I get the resistor soldered in. I won't bore you with that. And we'll see if this set wakes up at all. And if it does, then I'll go ahead and recap it, order the ballast tube, and uh, then we'll do a follow-up on it afterwards. Okay, let me get this resistor put in, and we'll see if oh, we can wake this thing. I just went in here to break the filament string or the heater string to put the resistor in and I figured this is the heater string right here I'd lift this diode it was around this terminal and it's got solder on it but as soon as I touched it it came off they never it never actually got soldered on there they soldered the loop closed but it never took to the terminal it was just stuck around it and as soon as I touched it it came off I'm just amazed that somebody clever enough to figure out the diode drop unless they copied it out of a magazine somewhere that may be what happened too they may have not figured this out on their own that may be something that they just copied uh, whoever it was wasn't very skilled oh, and the, the across the line cap just fell off as well not a very good soldering job that's all right probably shouldn't have the across the line cap in there anyway good way to blow something up. We'll take that out, put the resistor in line, and uh, we'll power this thing up. Okay, we've got the resistor sky wired into place on a good stiff piece of bus bar, and I've moved all the other potential short circuits away from places where they might explode. I think everything will be fine for now. It, it just amazes me. Why not make the connection correctly if you're going to be in there soldering but okay that's not shorting that's connected that's connected we're on dim bulb let's see what happens very x down turn it on receiver is on let's keep our fingers crossed About 100 milliamp years. Dial lights coming on. I don't see any tubes yet, but they can't be far behind. There's 40 volts. 45, 50 volts. Still not seeing any heaters. There must be something going through them because this is lit and the only way that can light up is if that Zener diode's dropping voltage. Two hundred and fifty. It's about two hundred and seventy five milliampers. It's supposed to be a three hundred milliampere heater string. Oh, that just dimmed and got bright again. Alright, I'm seeing the rectifier light up. So that means the heater string's working. Not hearing anything out of the speaker. Okay, there we go. Amplifier is working. IF is working. I'm hearing noise from the detector. And I suspect the oscillator just isn't working.
push it a little bit. 125. All right, we've got an isolated voltmeter here. Let's see what our B plus looks like. Meter, measure, let's DC. Is that in frame? No, it isn't, is it? Now, whoop, now it should be. A lot of junk hanging in front of it. And I suspect you can probably see it okay. Uh, volts DC, measure, enter. Okay. It is negative. Yeah, we got 122 B plus there. And 77 there. Um, that that resistor that goes between the two filter caps is supposed to be 2.5 K and it's over 11 K so <laughs> that's why that second B plus is so low we have 120 there but we have 22 there and we only have 77 here so that could be part of our problem uh, could replace that real quick but I suspect the oscillator is just too far gone. All right, let me uh, let me get another resistor in there real quick. Now that I know most of the sets are working. And I'm not hearing anything out of the eye, out of there, out of the converter now. That's odd. That's okay. Um, let me get that resistor changed out and we'll see what we got. All right, I got lazy and cheated. I just paralleled that uh, Pi filter resistor with another one of the same value, which brought me down to my correct 2500 ohms. And I said 10K, I was thinking it's 5K. I doubled that in my head to 10K supposed to be 2.5k and it's 5k so I put another 5k in parallel with it and uh, oh, let's plug this back in start with the dim bulb oh there we go And we've got 90 volts now. That's closer to what I expect to see. Oh, look at that. It works. I'm amazed that oscillator runs. But it did need enough voltage to run. This is the way things are right now. Visit Dream. Define your life. Let the okay, happen. so we're making pretty good progress here. I don't think the short wave will do anything. Especially not with that weak converter. There. And the alignment's even fairly close. At 610, and it's halfway between 6 and 650. So the alignment's not horrible either. Per month, Big Lou may have a solution for your previous policies as well. You may even save enough money to lighten the load on your so, one million dollar policy. Now, Remember, call Big Lou. Now that I know we have a viable receiver, I'll get that ballast tube ordered and we'll return the circuitry back to normal. Now I could leave the diode and the resistor in there. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's going to confuse the next guy that comes along if he's not familiar with using a diode to uh, drop the voltage down. Essentially what's happening is your 120 volts RMS has now become a pulsed DC. If you read this with a true RMS reading voltmeter, 
not you know a lot of AC voltmeters on not true RMS remember we're working with 170 volts peak on our AC the RMS voltage is the equivalent voltage to the DC voltage or the, it produces the equivalent heat and a resistance at 120 volts of DC would that's your 120 volts RMS but your peak voltage is like 170 so when you put the diode in line if you were to measure it you're actually getting 65.3 half of 120 would be 60 but it's actually putting out 65.3 it's slightly more than half and that's why we ended up with that other resistor in there to drop that extra voltage down of course the ballast tube is just another resistor like a tube in the string so that'll be fine So we'll get our ballast tube. I'm also going to order a converter tube because this is going to someone that won't know what to do if the set stops working for some reason. I'll put a fresh converter in there. It'll increase the sensitivity somewhat. And uh, we'll clean up the cabin a little bit. So I'm going to set this aside. We'll uh, finish this video up when the parts come in and I've got all the resistors and the capacitors changed out. Okay, my 6A8 came in today. I was amazed. It took three days after I ordered them on eBay for them to show up and uh, was very, very pleased. They're the metal type, so the shield doesn't get used anymore that was around this one. Now, this one did work, but it was extremely weak and I could only really get one station. I could barely pick out a couple others on AM. And the new tube has uh, helped enormously. There's one station. And this isn't a great receiver still, but there's another station. Yeah, so much noise in here. there's another one and another one but my little uh, triads put this to shame of course they have an RF amp in the front of them this does not this thing takes a long wire antenna and uh, I've just got a hunk of wire laying across the floor here but everything in here with the exception of the two mica uh, molded mica capacitors have been changed. I've kept the two uh, filter caps that were in there. I neatened up the wiring, put some heat shrink on there, mounted them to the chassis. I still have my resistor and the diode in there. I'm waiting for my ballast tube and I still have the Zener diode in there for the uh, dial lamp. That'll be going away. This uh, 2.5K resistor here is a new old stock unit that I had two of and it was absolutely perfect and looked the part for this radio so I installed it. It uh, runs warm but not excessively hot so it should last quite a while. It's been on for about 15 minutes and I can hang on to the resistor so it's doing its job well. In fact it wasn't high, uh, it measured 2.34K. It's a 20% resistor, so if anything, as it drifts up, it'll come into, you know, exactly 2.5K. It's replacing this one, which was measuring 5K. As long as I've been doing this, I'm still amazed. This is the cathode bypass cap, 10 microfarad at 25 volts. And I replaced it with one of these, 10 microfarad at 100 volts. <laughs> it just, uh, it just boggles the mind that this replaces that but it's only seeing uh, you know three or four volts on the cathode so that that'll last for a lifetime uh, power cord's been replaced properly it now uh, the neutral side is connected to the chassis 
the hot side goes to the switch, the switch goes over to the filament string. So when the set's shut off, it's cold. I don't know why they wired the switch to the chassis on these sets. It, it just doesn't make any sense to me. They must have had some reason. I did move a few things around to give me more room. When I moved the ground for the filter caps from over here by the uh, output tube, I moved it up to a ground terminal up here just to get some of the wiring out of the way. And I picked up some hum, which wasn't unexpected. All the grounds on here are uh, performed by the rivets holding the tube socket to the chassis. And it's not uncommon. Oxidation gets in there, the ground goes bad. So I went around and I soldered all of the tube sockets and all of the ground lugs. I soldered them right to the chassis. I just put a good spot of solder on there so they have a solid ground. I couldn't get it this one very well so I bonded it on the ground terminal, the uh, ground tabs to this tube socket and I grounded it also to this tube socket and they're both soldered to ground. So all of the hum went away when I did that. Cleaned it right up. Sounds pretty good. Oh, the short wave even works. Of course, you're not going to get much this time of day. And especially with all the noise that's down here, but the shortwave band works about as well as most of these sets did. These weren't really shortwave receivers. I think it was more of a gimmick to sell radios. Rewired the IF transformers. The wire, rubber uh, wire that was on those was just disintegrated. If every time you touched it, the insulation just fell off. So that IF transformer and this IF transformer have been rewired. And like I say, I'm still waiting for the ballast tube. I've started a little bit of work on the cabinet just to clean it up and make it solid and I'll make a back for that. And it's in time to get Roberts in. Nifty play by Davis, the catcher, first overall. I buffed the chassis up a little bit to get rid of some of the rust. Uh, I'll use some silver paint on the areas of the rust. I'm not going to go to heroics with this set. Uh, it's not anything that's, you know, historically important, but it is nice to save it and have it working again. Uh, I watched Buzz1151, his latest video, where he de-rusted a chassis. He took everything off the top of it, but left all the wiring and the tube sockets in it and put it in a baking pan with uh, rust dissolver. And I'm anxious to see his next video because he didn't remove the tube sockets and they were immersed and they're the type that's... Well, let me grab one and I'll show you what I'm talking about rather than trying to describe okay. it. It's full of these type of sockets that are, you know, two pieces of phenolic riveted together. And I watched him do that and I thought to myself that that rust dissolver is usually acidic and it's going to run between these two layers and there's going to be no way to get it out of there because these are riveted together on the chassis. So I'm anxious to see his next part three to that uh, radio restoration. I hope for his sake, um, you know, I like Buzz. I enjoy watching him. He's very uh, entertaining. And he usually does a pretty decent job of getting the sets up and working. But when I saw him do that, I, my heart sank. I said, I hope you're not destroying that set, my friend. We'll see. I could be wrong, but I think I think he's going to have problems with that set when he tries to fire it up after uh, soaking in that acid solution. Keep our fingers crossed for him. And uh, this is not a cut towards him. I you know I could be dead wrong on this, and I again I enjoy watching his videos, but I got my fingers crossed. So anyway, this set's going. Two one. Outside ball three. The new owner, I think, is going to be very happy with this. Uh, it's going to be used in town near a couple of radio stations, so they won't need much of an antenna on it, and I'm sure it's not going to get used all that much. It's more of a display piece. 
but at least it'll be functional. Now, I do have one worry with this set. Let me see if I can get the camera closer here. I'm going to drop you down. Bear with me. There we go. This set's not as sensitive as I think it should be. And if I move the camera in, I think I know what the problem is. I don't know if you can see the green. This is the antenna coil. This is where the antenna comes in here, goes through a capacitor, and goes through this first coil. And then it's coupled to the AM and the short wave part of the circuit. It's very green and crusty, and I can see bare copper over here. Now, I checked the continuity. It does have continuity. However, the wire this is wound out of is finer than hair, and it measures 2.7 ohms, where this one, which is a much, much heavier wire, measures 6.8 ohms. So I've got a feeling that that corrosion has short-circuited a bunch of the turns that it's in here, and it's probably contributing to the lack of sensitivity somewhat. Now the set is working. Uh, I don't know why I'm not getting... Oh, I know what's wrong. I got the camera over here. That's where all the rag. I'm looking around the room going, what the heck's causing the noise all of a sudden? I moved the camera closer. Um, granted, there's no RF front end on this. Uh, the tube made a big difference. I went from only being able to hardly hear one station to having three or four of them available. You know, I can hear, I can uh, receive now. But I think this coil is bad right here. I thought about trying to rewind it, but it's a very tiny cross section and it's one of those ones where the wires, you know, they're they're wound back and forth across each other like this, even in that small form, they zigzag back and forth and I think they do that to reduce the capacitance of the winding. There's no way I can duplicate that. I could take this off, strip it off, count the turns and just scramble wind you know uh, the same number of turns back on it and would it help maybe maybe not I wish I could find the schematic for this set I have looked everywhere I, I spent another two hours today online trying to track down what model this set is this is the only general television set that I found that uses a ballast tube three 6 volt tubes and two 25 volt tubes and the ballast that I've ordered is specifically for a set with three 6 volt tubes and uh, two 25 volt tubes so I know I've got the right ballast coming or at least the right type of ballast coming but I cannot find another general television receiver in any of the schematics anywhere that has this tube lineup, you know, three 6 volt tubes and two 25s and a ballast tube. Everything else in there uses 12s, 14s, or it's a battery operated set. There's not another one I can find, and I'm convinced this is 1940 something because a 6A8 in the front end, that tube pretty much was gone by the end of World War II. Uh, you don't see many sets. You'll find a couple or three that were manufactured in 46, 47 that used 6A8 in the front end. But that tube by then had become obsolete. Uh, so I'm guessing this is, you know, pre-war, pre-1941, 40, you know, right in that range anyway. I'm fairly certain of that. But I've been through all the schematics I can find online anywhere. I've dropped a couple of emails to a couple of the guys that sell schematics that you can't see before you buy them. You have to go by model number and because I don't have a model number for this set there was no information anywhere. I did find out that um, the CX and the serial number means this was manufactured by Climax Radio Corporation for General Television but other than that, I can't find any other information. Like I say, there's 
probably 150 schematics out there for general radio or general television radios but none of them none of them have a ballast tube or this tube line up in them so I'm kind of at a dead end if I had a schematic I could measure you know I'd know what the resistance of that coil is supposed to be because all of their schematics have the, the resistance labeled anyway enough of that I'm gonna move on and we'll do some work on the cabinet Okay, I turned off the camera power supply. For, you know, guitar piece. There's something there. I don't know what that's coming from. You know, you know, the only hands are, you know, Led Zeppelin and... Oh, yeah. What does he think about that? Isn't that a problem? I guess I can't complain. It's getting several stations. The one that's up here is always weak this time of night. That's the local, well, local, oldie station. And the, even the triad would struggle to get that this time of night. Or time in the afternoon, rather. I guess it's evening. What time is it? Around 6.30, I guess. So, I guess it's working all right. I'll stop obsessing over that and uh, take care of some cabinet work. See you in a bit. It's packed in here. I don't have any more room. Uh, you know, the insulation being the compressible mats worked out pretty well to get in those spaces, but I'm, I'm out of room, OM. Yeah, I mean, at some point, if I ever get an oil filled bond reactor or something that wouldn't sink for its supper. Yep, but for now, this will be fine. Anyway, when IWQ runs with me. Okay, we have our ballast tube installed. We've removed my dropping resistor and the diode that was in there as a dropper and we've removed the Zener diode that was in there to allow us to run the pilot lamp at 6 volts and the set is working now I'm a little bit annoyed this company says in their header that almost all of their tubes are new and if they're used they will state that they're used nowhere on this this is the original ad nowhere on there does it say this was a used tube and this ballast tube is obviously very used it is intact and it is working but i paid a lot of money for a used tube but you can see a lot of heat discoloration in this area and this type of rusting is what happens to steel when it's exposed to extreme heat for a long period of time this isn't water rusting this is heat oxidation and I don't know if it'll be obvious in the camera, but there's a lot of discoloration here that steel does when it gets very, very hot, and these tubes do run very hot. So, obviously a used tube, but it is intact. It is doing the proper voltage drop. Something. Even the best. What amazes, another thing that amazes me is this speaker. For all the crap that's been get, uh, gunked onto the thing here, time to be a buyer the number one thing you have to, you just it have sounds to be okay patient, right it's just there's no two ways around i've hooked a decent antenna on it they're gonna get, you know, they're gonna about 50 feet of wire out there and they're gonna get it okay and, and uh it's perked up quite a bit especially with the new 6a8 you can hear my electric fencing in the background out there tick tick presenting um you know they're probably putting in three trying to figure out 
behind it. And it's at the heart of the Supreme Court decision. Volunteers. As a parent, it's giving an interview earlier this week or lately. So we're getting a few AM stations and the short wave works. CHU Canada. You're not going to get much on the shortwave bands this time of day. So I guess the set's functional, and uh, we'll move on to restoring the cabinet. They're never going to use this for short wave. This will probably hardly ever be turned on. It'll be more of a uh, art piece sitting on top of an old bureau. So I guess the antenna cord is all day and uh, amazing. Plans to come back again. Visit Cafe Expresso in Portsmouth today. We'll move Hi, on and uh, and I want to talk. We'll do some cabinet work. All right. We've got another one ready to go home to its owner. And it was released this past week. I took uh, some 4 rot steel wool and lacquer thinner to the top and smoothed out the old lacquer finish and then gave it a good coat of furniture polish. And it actually looks pretty nice. <laughs> it's got a nice sheen to it and even the sides came out good. There's a few nicks and scratches in here but uh, this is like that barn fine 1950 Chevrolet that's been sitting under a coating of two inches of dust and when you roll it out you find out the body is in good shape the paint's worn from many years of use but you know you fix the uh, essentials the brakes the engine top off the fluids and drive it as a survivor and that's how this set's going to be we've got a nice new uh, dial bezel or not bezel uh, crystal face glass whatever you want to call it we made one of those today Install a grill cloth that fits the overall appearance of the radio, and uh, this will be off to its new home. And the short wave's working. Not too much, it's still early, it's only about four in the afternoon. The other night I had uh, 80 meter amateur coming in, but CHU Canada. Weak, but it's in there. Good 
gun control, repeats the lines he says, you know, he was... So, this one's ready to go. That's it. Not a lot of detail in this one, but I figured I'd put something together real quick. Another survivor. It is saved and on its way. I just want things to I'm the radio mechanic. Thanks for watching. Don't know how many more of these I'm going to get. I'm uh, working on getting my passport and everything updated, so hopefully this fall I'll be back over in Asia. And soaking up the warm sunshine while the snow is flying here in New Hampshire. Until the next time, I'm the Radio Mechanic. Bye-bye.